for him. Sweaty bodies, dingy hotel rooms, men and women talking whispers. Tonight, the players of the night reveal the tricks of the trade, why they're involved in this taboo illegal lifestyle. Prostitution has become a deadly business. We can't just lie down and take it anymore. We are all getting screwed by prostitutes. The old profession in a new light, all right? Our prostitutes, pimps, and madams sucking morality out of America. Join us. Enough cards. I got enough cards up here, for God's sake, to challenge Amarillo Slim to a game. Let me start off and introduce you to some folks at uh, from the Eagle Forum. Old friend of mine, Janine Hanson at Loud Hanson at Loudmouth One. Hi, Janine. Hi. Nice How are to you? be here. Nice to see you. And on uh, home base with me tonight. All right. Home base with me tonight. We have Nancy Grace, who is a prostitute. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Walt. How you doing? All right, relax. Nancy, l let me start out. Does your background compare to the drug-addicted, abused girl that we hear so much about? What's your background? I mean, you weren't you weren't sodomized by your father? No, and, not you know, quite. Weren't sent out to work at an no, early age? No, no one sent me out anywhere. You just like it, huh? I didn't say that either. <laughs> Oh, really? Why, how, why did you become a prostitute? Good money. You, you weren't making good money at anything else? I mean, you sit here, you look like a school teacher. Everybody has their own opinion of what they're supposed to look like. The okay. money's good. The money's good. How much money can you make in a week? Enough. Enough. I'm not going to put it down. Right. Uh, let, let me ask you this. Let me, let me ask you this. How much do you charge for a trip? I don't charge trip. What do you do? People pay me for my company. Oh, so you're an escort. You're an That's escort? That's putting it. You're an escort. I go out and I watch people, men like you, that like to dress up in ladies' clothes and That's parade around. Men and like me it. who like to dress up in ladies' clothes? <laughs> who, the, who the hell's been peeking in my closet, huh? You go, That's what you do? You watch guys who like to dress Sometimes. up in ladies' clothes? Um, you never I, have. You never I have had sex. The past. I'm married. I don't do that anymore. I go out and I watch men like you, as I said, dress up in ladies' clothes, or people that like to be tied up in spanks or certain yeah. fantasies. No you, sex. you used to, though, before you got married, turn trip. Pardon? You used to, before you got married, consummate yes. the uh, relationship. Before I got married. Before you got married, who did you marry? A very nice gentleman. Was he one of a your Yankee, tricks? unfortunately. Was he one of your tricks? We met through an agency. Met through an agency? <laughs> wait, wait a second here. Well, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to put this all together. But uh, you, uh, you think what you do should be legalized? Yes. Do you think prostitution in general should be legalized? Uh, yes, as long as they use people that are over there, you know, legal age. Well, as a matter of fact, we were going to have some more prostitutes uh, in here tonight. But I can tell you the hypocrisy of it all. State law doesn't allow us to have anyone under the age of 18 in my studio, and the prostitutes were 14 and 15. Working, working the streets of New York, what do you think about that? I think it sucks. How old were you when you started prostituting? 31. 31? You mean you had a regular job before? 
Yeah, well, you know. Well, what was your regular job? What is, what is your education um, background? Pardon? What is your educational background? I finished high school, been to college. I've worked as a legal secretary, um, getting a degree in computer science and engineering. Janine. <laughs> Janine Hansen, all right, is uh, head of Eagle Forum in the state of Nevada where there's legalized prostitution. That's very important to remember. Janine, uh, do you think perhaps Nancy is fooling herself as well as the audience when she talks about the positive aspects of prostitution? Well, from what she said, she doesn't sound like an ordinary prostitute. Most prostitutes enter prostitution. The average age is age 17. So many of them are much younger than that, and so we have children entering prostitution. The average age of prostitutes is 22. And so they're very young. And we have a situation in which most prostitutes, 80% of them have been sexually abused at home. 63% have run away from home. So you see we have a, a series of victimizations here. And they go on being victims as prostitutes. And they aren't in it for the money, although they say that, because 83% of them don't have a dime to make on the next week. And so they're in a situation of dire financial st straits most of the time. 80% of them have pimps. Therefore, they're getting the money, not the not the prostitute. Did you have and a I pimp when you were an average prostitute? Did you ever have a pimp when no. you were prostituting? No. Well, how'd you they get? In, how were you able to get into the business then? Pick up the yellow pages and open it up to either where it says escort or massage. Pick up the phone and, and those dial are, the number. Those are prostitutes. I'm not gonna say that's what they do or they don't do. I can't speak for anybody else. Did you have an ad in the yellow pages? No. Let Agency. your fingers do the walking. Do. Get your left. <laughs> When, when you, Nance, Nance, when you were a prostitute, before you started just watching men like me dress up in women's clothes, who like to get tied up and spanked, uh, when you were doing that, uh, before you were doing that and you were doing prostitution, as we look upon, as me and myself did, weren't you worried about getting some weirdo in the room with you or something? I mean, That's why I, you work with a reputable agency. The reputable agency yeah, had already investigated the, the guy. Yeah, that, you know, the same clientele for 5, 10, 15 years. That's I'm, why you go out and you see people that wouldn't do that, like, you know, professional people, doctors, lawyers, he never lawyers, walked in a room and some guy players. was standing there with his pet sheep or something. No. <laughs> do you do that? How, do, how, does your, how does your husband react to all of this? I mean, he met you on a date set up by a reputable agency, and I assume he paid you that night and you got it on, right? No, he paid me, we went out to dinner. Not everybody that goes out and gets paid for their company goes to bed with people. See, that's the misconception. Why, a, a misconception? What, what do you guys, well, I mean, but you're ready to go to bed if that's what the guy wants to do, It's right? up to the young lady. You're paying her for her time, for her company. You're not paying her to go to bed with you. If that's what you want to do, well, that's I gotta her tell business. You, guys. <laughs> To the guys, to the guys, Clinton. Are any of you guys such pigos you can't get a date? You gotta, huh? I mean, that sounds ridiculous to me. Next, next we'll hear from a call girl who used to be a cop, now finds herself in jail. What a mixture. Let me uh, let me introduce you. Let me introduce you uh, by telephone and home, folks, and here in our studio, a young lady by the name of uh, Norma Jean Alma DeBar. And Norma Jean is a former call girl. She's also was a police officer, and she's written a book called Cop to Call Girl about her experience. Unfortunately, she's now in jail at the California Rehabilitation Center, and she's been in for ten months, at least on one count of pandering. Norma Jean, how are you? Well, I could be much better, thank you. All right, I know you've only got a few minutes on the telephone, but yes. uh, what do you think about legalization of prostitution? Well, I'm in favor of decriminalization because I think that when a person becomes an adult, one should be able to decide what kind of standard morality to live by. And I was listening to you soon. Of course, uh, Janine Hanson and I, I believe, uh, were on another show last year on the Donahue Show. That's right, Norma Jean. And, uh, you know, even if, uh, if everything she said was true, which it's not, uh, to put people in prison because they don't save their money and to put them in prison because they were... 
uh, abused by the parents. This is an absurd sort of thing to do. And of course, the prison law here in California is, is highly overcrowded. And uh, I think that it's about time that people stop going to prison for making consenting adult choices. And uh, when people violate other people's rights, that's the time that they should go to prison. I think it's really too bad that we think that those that are involved in prostitution aren't the victims. And it's too bad that Norma Jean was a uh, call girl as she was a meter maid in California. But she made that choice. Unfortunately, there's a lot of girls that might choose not to go into prostitution because it's illegal. But if it were legalized or decriminalized, we'd have a lot more girls without any excuse and going into prostitution. Just That's like if we decriminalized Well, where's drugs, Norma Jean and Janine? Let me, let me draw a line here. Let me draw a line here. What about the young lady who uh, meets a guy and decides to move in with him, all right, and lives with him and maybe isn't working and uh, they're living together. They're not sure they're ever going to get married or anything. It's just kind of a, a make good uh, situation, but she's getting her food. She's getting transportation. She gets, is that prostitution? Well, as you know, I don't believe in uh, relationships outside of marriage. All right, but is and that... I, and however... I don't consider that to be the kind of prostitution on the streets that we need to be worried about. When they had a crackdown on street prostitution in Vegas, and you know that prostitution, street prostitution, is not legal in Nevada at all. No, but it's you do have legalized legal in, in, the, in the brothels. In a few rural counties, it is legal in brothels only. Well, when and you say rural counties, it's right outside Clark County, which is But it's less than 300 Vegas. girls working in legal prostitution in the entire state of Nevada. Less than 300 girls. And so you can see that it's very minimal there. And what we have is a situation where we have girls who are being victimized by the whole situation. Norma Jean, I didn't hear you. Say that again. The, the reason that there are only 300 working in the brothel is because of the size of the brothel. Obviously, it's not because there would be more women working in the brothels if there were more of them, if they were larger. That's not true, Norma Jean, especially since the AIDS scare, the numbers of prostitutes in Nevada has gone way down. And so there's plenty of empty rooms at the brothels and the the numbers will still go down, and they're working at the le legislature to get rid of prostitution entirely in the well, valley. you know, that's something that they're never going to be able to do, because as long as there's a man that is willing to pay for a woman that's willing to take the money, they are going to have sex. And, of course, you know something? The money doesn't change anything. The money doesn't spread AIDS. Ignorance spreads AIDS. Ignorance spreads all kinds of diseases. And just because a woman is in charge, doesn't mean she's not safe from getting AIDS. And, in fact, when all I right, began... Well, class, we're not doing an AIDS show, all right? We're doing why you became a hooker. I'm sorry? We're not doing an AIDS show. We're doing what in the world got into you. Let me, let me, let me, well, I know what got into you. <laughs> Norma Jean, Norma Jean, in the, few, in the few minutes you have left, why did you become a prostitute? I mean, do you like it so much and were you so ugly that you couldn't get all you needed? Janine, when you, well, what do you think when you hear an answer? I mean, I even see a smile on your face. Well, I feel sorry for her, and I feel sorry for a lot of other women that haven't had any better choices. As I said, 80% well, have, have been choices. sexually abused. Oh, no, 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 I have better choices, but that was the best choice I could make. Unfortunately, most of them end up with nothing in the end, and the sad thing is, is that it really... Well, some of them do end up with something crimes. in the end, too. You know. <laughs> You, you, you seem to be, Nancy, getting a little bit uh, bent out of shape to listen to all this stuff. I mean, uh, how long can you keep doing what you're doing? How long can you keep it, keep it up? As long as men want to dress up in ladies' clothes. Do you feel you're benefiting society doing... Well, let me ask you something. Have you ever had any... Famous clients, I mean, uh, you say guys like me who like to dress up like yeah. women. You've had famous clients. Like who? Um, Philadelphia Eagles football player. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles football player? Yeah. Like to uh, dress up in women's clothes? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, oh, I'd love to tell player. Harry Carson who that is. And doctors, lawyers, judges, policemen, and judges, talk Judges, I can host. understand. <laughs> And the talk show host? The talk show host. Bill Boggs. No, it wasn't Bill Boggs. Huh? <laughs> it was not Bill Boggs. Yeah. 
A talk show host in Philadelphia? I didn't say that. All I said was it wasn't Bill Bogg. But it was a talk show host. Can't you share it with us? No. Can't share it? No. Nope. Is he on a national show or a local show? I want to get a hint here. Is he on a national show or a local show? I'm not saying. I do not name names and talk. No ministers. No. No ministers? No ministers. I'm God, wouldn't you like to know who that talk show that. host is who dresses up with like girls? Hey, next. Next, we'll meet a Fred who's a John. He's damn proud to admit that he's been using prostitutes for over 20 years. Stand by. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show, furnished by Redwood Limousine. When in New York, call 212-226-7665. I want to uh, introduce uh, at home base right now Fred Cherry, who frequents prostitutes. Obviously, that name Fred, uh, uh, is that a pseudonym, Cherry? No, no, it's the name on my birth certificate. It is, Cherry? Yes. You obviously got rid of that very early. Uh, let me ask you a question. You represent an organization called Jaguar? Uh, Jaguar Johns and Call Girls United Against Repression, a not-for-profit corporation organized under the laws of the state of New York. I tell you, it isn't often that we can debate the prostitution issue with the customers. Why are you willing to admit that you go out with prostitutes when it's almost a taboo subject in our society? Well, uh, because I feel I'm oppressed, and the only way to get You're rid oppressed? Of yes, Why? as a John, I'm oppressed, because it's against the law. And, and because uh, my... Can't you get laid anyplace else? I'm... <laughs> I'm in bad health. I've been, I've been in bad health all my life, and I can't get out uh, that much. Also, the fact that I'm so thin makes me unattractive. You're not unattractive. That's what you say. Do you think Women he's unattractive? Huh? No. He doesn't well, think you're unattractive. I didn't get, uh, you... I didn't get sex for the first time Would... in my life till I was 30. You were and that 30? was with a prostitute. And that was with a prostitute? That was with a prostitute, yeah. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. Let me, let's get serious here for just a second. And Janine, if you have any questions, jump right in here, all right? Let me ask something. You didn't get sex till you were 30. Yes. You were told you were unattractive. I wasn't That's told I was unattractive. You I, you because I, I was trying to meet women. I was trying to... Did you to, date? I, I tried to... Yes, I dated, but nobody would go out with me on a second date. <laughs> well, is there a possibility... Yeah. Is there a possibility the there was something else wrong with you? Well, as a matter Were fact, you too aggressive? Did no, you have no. rat breath? I no, mean, what was no, no. As a matter of fact, at the time, I was even thinner than I am now. I was, I was around 100 pounds, and I'm 5 foot 10. Now, that's kind of thin, isn't it? Under 105 foot 10? I, uh, yeah, I was, I, I'm 5 foot 10, and I was less than 105 pounds. Now, that's a bit thin, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you put on a condom, you look like a walking <laughs> So, yeah, but could I... so you started, you started going with prostitutes. Yes. How much money do you figure you paid the prostitutes? Well, I haven't actually added it up. I can tell you how much I pay now. How much? I pay my, I give my girlfriend one hundred and sixty dollars every time she pays me. She's your girlfriend? Yes, she's my girlfriend. Okay. She, you know, you see the suit I'm wearing? Yeah. She, took, she went to the store with me, and she helped me select it. Okay. Hmm. Do you have? Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, wait a minute, I'll tell you something uh, else. Janine, you heard, you heard, in here you heard Norma Jean I Almodova. I don't know what to say. Before. I, I can't believe it, that somebody would actually be on national television advertising that they live that way. It's incredible to me. I think it's, I think it's unfortunate. I think he's and got I think a lot of guts. I, I think there, I think there ought to be, I, I don't know why there are more guys. Oh, well, well, Fred, let me ask you, you really think of this girl as your girlfriend? Don't I you? am, absolutely. Let me give you an example. Would you marry her if, you, if she I don't married? believe in, I, I don't think marriage is for me. I don't think I am suited for marriage. That's probably right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, okay. There are some people who are not suited for marriage. Well, That's obviously, cool. I had that problem once. I've been married three times, but I mean, <laughs> I'm suited now. Well about people who want to go out and do their own thing and go with prostitutes or whatever they feel like it, men or women, and then they expect society and the public and the rest of us to pay for it. Because right now, up to 25% of prostitutes on the street have AIDS. There's all kinds of other diseases which they have. And you go out there and spread that and have your good time, and then you end up in the hospital and can't pay for that. You say you aren't in good health now, 
And then you and I, the rest of us that aren't doing that, that haven't chosen that lifestyle, we have to pay for that and what? all the other problems that it brings. And I don't want to. I'm not interested in paying for your perverted lifestyle. So wait there. a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. First of all, first of all, first of all, I do, I do not spread diseases. I, I, use, I practice safe sex. I've never had any uh, diseases yet. Except, unless you count the, the crabs. Unless you count what? Unless you count the crabs. Unless you count the crabs. I mean, you don't get hospitalized. You do not get hospitalized well, with the crabs. Wait a second. For all we know, he's a ball player and used someone else's jock strap. Excuse me. Go ahead, First of all, there's a difference. There's prostitutes that work the street and prostitutes that work agencies. There's a big difference there, lady. Trust me. And I've been in the business. They all been in the way. I've been in the business. Almost eight years, and I've never, ever had anything, much less crab. You take a bath, you wouldn't have me either. Wait a minute. All right, but Fred, yeah. Fred, do you have, and I think this is important, do you have what society would consider normal sex with this lady? Absolutely, certainly. All right. How can you be sure she doesn't bring home a disease? As, as uh, Miss Hansen says, very possibly uh, one, this prostitute doesn't have the disease tonight when you sleep with her, but tomorrow when you sleep with her, she got it from someone the day before. Because I practice safe sex. And safe sex is baloney, Fred. No, it is not. You use a condom. Right, say, right, right. That is only effective. A pro uh, they originally said 70% of the time, all right? Now, they say if it's used anally, it's effective 10% of the time. I'm not doing anything anally, and I'm not using... <laughs> Right. Right on, so, you know, credit where credit is due. Right, At least on. Fred knows that the anus is an exit, not an entrance. All right. And wait a minute. Let me fin let me finish. I I don't use those uh, sheep. Uh, you know, those condoms made from sheep gut. I use the latex condoms and the American ones at that. And they're supposed they're safer than the European ones. How often? How often do you pay $160 for your girlfriend? Once a week. Once a week? You're yes. earning pretty good bucks. That's cheap. That's cheap, $160? You know, wait a minute. How much, is, how much do you charge for some big Philadelphia Eagle football player to put on a, a dress? Ba yeah, put on a dress so but you can pet him. how long are we talking? Well, how long does the guy like to dress on? I mean, the it something... Depends whether he won or lost the game. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, he lost the game. How long does he need the dress on? Two hours, on? maybe. Two hours? Mm -hmm. And when he has this dress on, do you get him to ejaculate? Well, he wears dresses. He wears a uh, garter belt, bra, stockings, uh, a negligee. And we're paying he twenty. Bring his and we're paying back. twenty-five bucks a game to watch these pansies play. Yeah, I don't know why they don't always win. Do you? Let me ask you, Sermon. You get these guys. You get these guys to ejaculate the climax. Sometimes, sometimes, um, you know, that's been a while. How do you get them to ejaculate? Yeah, they just walk around in their little dresses and pantyhose or whatever. And you pat them and they, say, nice girl. No, I don't touch them. I sit there and tell them how lovely he looks in his pink negligee. And what a shame you made such a mistake and lost the game. And you're entitled to your belief. Not everybody is, you know, gung-ho sex, are you? I'd like to bring up a couple of the Philadelphia Eagles. Football. Well, we'll do that next. Stand by. We'll be right back. Prostitutes, pimps, johns, and uh, amen, what happens to the American family? I, Nancy, I've got to come back to you for just a second here, because one, one of my guests in the audience uh, asked me to ask you if uh, the particular Philadelphia Eagle uh, who dresses up for you is a tight end. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? I've never checked this area. But I would imagine after eight years in prostitution, you're at least a wide receiver. <laughs> Kyle, your opinion, but that doesn't make you any better than me. 
Oh, well, my gosh, no. Well, you sit there and you judge people. You don't know me. You're basing your opinion of me on your overall opinion of prostitution. I'm, based, I'm not I'm basing typical. my opinion on someone who screws some guy and then marries him and then goes out and tries to justify what she's doing by First standing all, around watching people dress up in women's clothes, all right, and say how beautiful you are. You're as sick as they are. Psychotherapy, my ass. My ass. Do you like to dress up in women's clothes? No, I don't do that. I don't like that. Right, you like regular sex. You're That's probably right. kinkier. Huh? You're probably what's more happening perverted. here is just I'm probably the whole thing. I don't have to justify myself to you or anybody. No, I don't sure go don't. out. I didn't. You sure don't. But, honey, you wanted to because you brought your ass here. I didn't arrest you. Huh? Me. They your called people, you. Your people here yeah. called me. They paid my transportation. Yeah, here. we pay everyone's okay. transportation. All right. So don't tell me I brought my ass here because my ass is none of your business. Your ass, I wouldn't want to have in my business. Don't worry. Honey. I'm not just full of business and you just as full of as you are. This is Valerie. This is Valerie. Turn it on. Turn it on. Let me hear what Fred said. Let's hear. Let's. Let's hear what. Let's hear what the human has to say. <laughs> Downey, you are a pervert too, and your perversion is is verbal sadism. Verbal sadism. Yeah, that's what your perversion is. Why, where, where have I been sadistic, Fred, my dear boy? Sadistic to this lady here. Sadistic to That's her? That's correct. You're verbally sadistic I to this I don't know lady. why you can't get a girlfriend, babe. You are so, you are so condescending to some bitch that you amaze me. There you go again. There you go again. There you go again. You know, the way you're acting is just symptomatic of the whole problem of prostitution. You have been very disrespectful to her Never no matter what anybody like him. Thank and you. that's precisely precisely one of the reasons why prostitution is bad for society. It makes women objects. It makes them subject to all kinds of physical and mental abuse. They have to uh, subject themselves to every form of rape. I get up and walk and off. And also, for instance, in Nevada, where we have legalized prostitution, it does not lower the rape rate. Uh, in my community, which is only 10 miles from the largest brothel, we have a rape rate five times the national average, and it's just symptomatic of the whole process, which is disrespectful to women and disrespectful to the family unit. Janine, is possibly, you... is possibly the reason for your high rape rate in your area, the fact that your, your casinos are open 24 hours, you're serving booze 24 hours, people are getting drunk, they're not knowing what the hell they're doing and they're going out and bothering people. You got some girl coming up to serve you with her boobs coming out of her mouth. They're so high. I mean, I don't, I don't think thing? that. I think that those things probably contribute as I well as too. the fact that we have the highest <coughs> readership of pornographic magazines along with Alaska. But I really feel it's too bad. It's too bad that all of these things, all of these things contribute to the degradation of women and the family and that society has to pay for those things. We have to pay for the broken lives. We have to pay for the disease. We have to pay for it when we have not chosen to live that way. And your attitude towards her today is simply one that is expressed towards all women when they are viewed as prostitutes or sex objects. And I think it's really a sorry uh, attitude for My attitude is the same towards men who've got to go out like poor Fred here and pay 160 bucks you've and think they're getting anybody? it off. Huh? Truthfully, you've never I've paid? I've never I don't paid believe a you. dime, honey. I don't believe Never you. done it. Never done I do not believe it. I've gotten home. mine. Get I have been a television host all my oh, life. On. I've been a TV host. I've been a TV host less than a year. You've got a casting cast. I, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. Let me introduce Eric Nadler, who's the senior editor for Penthouse. Eric is the senior editor. I understand that you've authored a scholarly dissertation now on prostitution. You favor the legalization. What types of benefits would society and prostitutes receive through uh, legalization? Oh, well, I think uh, in the sexual area, the society flourishes when a uh, thousand flowers bloom. 
And what I have heard from this uh, loudmouth station over there is the most intolerant um, kind of ayatollism uh, as far as sex goes um, that I've heard recently. But it's so typical of the fanatic wing of American politics where you reside happily. You think happily. you can make your point without calling names? Or do you no, have you're to standing by the loudmouth. That's all. Um, that's what I say. The, the point that I'd like to make about you is that you have no real power in the society. The sexual revolution is occurring and it's leaving you by the way station. You believe only in sex within marriage and probably you're against 90% of sexual acts within uh, that marriage anyway. You know, you are not representative of the American public. You're a bitter, uh, bitter woman who does not who does not bad, conform to the sex revolution. And I have, heard, I, have heard, I have heard this victimization argument all across the country during the Reagan-Meese years. You know, Ed Meese sent a porn commission out to take Playboy and Penthouse out of America's 7-Elevens. And you know what? Playboy and Penthouse is the safest sex you can have because you never got AIDS from a magazine, but that didn't stop you and your and that's And that's where 57% of rapists have read softcore porn like Playboy and Penthouse immediately before going out to claim a victim. Don't tell me your and pornography does not create victims. And 93% have probably eaten dinner before claiming four, a victim. Must four. be something to catch it, right? One out of four. <laughs> now, for, two, for, two, for, for two long years, during, during the Meese years, we've heard the federal government practically call our nation perverts. And you know what? We're sick of it because we're not perverts. We're just normal humans trying to have a good time in a healthy, happy, normal way. And that includes... And that isn't, and that isn't Eric, healthy. Eric, let me ask Eric, what is a healthy, happy, good way? Between two consenting adults, I would say uh, practically anything goes. Practically as long anything. as somebody else is willing to foot the bill for your perversion. Hey, he's is smoking right? cigarettes. He's going to be maybe in the Lung uh, Cancer Institute. Why aren't you taking on the tobacco company instead of bothering us here? Well, you know what? I'm concerned about my children. I'm concerned about my children. I'm concerned about my children and other people's children. The FBI has told us that one out of four girls at 12 years old will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. By who? Most of the people... By who? It doesn't Mo matter Mo by yeah, it matters. All of it matters. them, almost without exception, have been pornographic consumers. Consumers of pornography in every form. Whenever what they go in to find child molesters... What is Calvin Klein ads, they find movie of the week. I mean, pornography... Uh, pornography which is, sexually is everything explicit. from the most... Uh, from things like Playboy and Penthouse to the most perverted kinds of sexual violence. How about and New York Times Sunday today, Magazine advertisements? Have violence. you seen those? You're most probably upset about those. I'm not you? reading the New York Times while I'm here. I could tell. <laughs> Janine, Janine, when he says, when Eric says, uh, and I'm going to scrap the consenting adults part, all right, a married couple, he says, well, you'd probably be uh, opposed to sex 90% of the sex that he would consider normal, all right? So let's find out. In a marriage, would you approve of oral sex? I really don't think I should discuss my personal oh, private Oh, come life. on. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, uh, all right. No? She's entitled. She's entitled. She's entitled. She's entitled. In a marriage, do you approve of oral sex? That's none of your business. Well, honey, honey, if honey, if I don't, honey are... let me tell you something. If like you've been a hooker for eight years, all right, and spread it for anyone, I imagine you'll take anything in the mouth anyhow, right? <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute and talk with that. Let's, uh, let's talk to an escort service right now in the uh, tri-state area here back east and uh, see who we've got on the line. Sharon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Turn Sharon up a little bit so we can all hear her. Sharon, can you hear me? Uh, Daryl. All right, now let me ask you, what do you need to know about me to uh, be able to get me an escort? Okay, I would need your uh, full address, your, the town you're in, your, right. full, your name and, and your telephone number and the name name as listed in a telephone directory. And I would have to call the telephone company and confirm that, and then I would call you back at the number you give me. All right, but what if someone's got an unlisted phone? Well, if it's unlisted, as long as you give us the name and the address, 
the phone company will tell us that the number is unlisted, and if there's no listing at that with that name at that address, they will tell us that also. All right, you don't need to know uh, how much money I make, uh, when I had my last physical, if I have AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, any of that? No. <laughs> okay. How much is it going to cost me for an escort? Well, where would you be located? In Pardon me? Area? Depends on what town I'm in. Right. Okay. So let's say I'm right in New York City. Okay, in Manhattan, uh, the price is 154 the hour. That includes the girls' transportation. And uh, if, if you wanted to put it on a credit card, it would be 225 If you put it on a credit card, it's 225 Let me ask you something. If I put it on the credit card, does it give the name of a restaurant or a gasoline station or something on the credit card? Well, it's a, it's a business. That's the way I can say. It's a business so I can write it off, right? I don't have to say that it's an escort service. Right. Okay. Now, I want to take this young lady out to dinner. Dinner's going to take three hours. Uh, so I'm paying 150 bucks an hour. That's 450 bucks before uh, I've eaten anything. <laughs> no, I'm talking, I'm, talking, I'm talking about going out to dinner, folks. Is that correct, Sharon? Uh, yes. Well, normally we send a girl to some place that can reach her by telephone. Well, she has access to a phone, and we have access to her. Okay, that's good. I let you know where I'm going for dinner. Now. What if I'm really attracted to this young lady and she's attracted to me? Or my pocketbook? Can I, uh, maybe get someplace else? As long as I have a phone that you can contact her at? Excuse me? Can I take her home and go to bed with her? Well, you can take her home. It's up to her if I go to bed with her, though, right? Well, we provide the girl's time, you know. That really, that's all we provide. Okay, that's interesting. That's, uh, that's an escort service. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon, I probably won't be calling you, okay. but my wife will undoubtedly call you when she watches this show and sees me calling you. Okay. Eric, let me come back to you, pal. You also did a study that the United States Army, the military, in uh, Vietnam set up brothels for the men. That's right. So if, if they admit, if the government in that sense admits that men need that type of, uh, of companionship, why then are they so intransigent about uh, the legalization of uh, prostitution stateside? Well, uh, they are concerned about the uh, pure prudery and the puritanical strain in this country that still exists to this day. And uh, that's why no one wants to go out on a limb and lead a campaign for the uh, decriminalization of it. But if you look in the de facto sense, I mean, it is not a high priority. There are no major politicians leading an anti uh prostitution drive in this country because they know it's political suicide. Well, you I, know, after Janine? World War II in Nevada, they... When, when the army came in in Nevada, they simply closed down all the brothels in Nevada completely. And that's when legalized prostitution in the Reno area, in Washoe County, was eliminated. And then the people voted it out. And so the government did come in and close everything down because they were concerned about disease, which we all need to be concerned about still. Well, if we need to be concerned about disease, then uh, I don't think Eric goes far enough when he says uh, decriminalization of prostitution. I think you have to legalize it. I don't like the government taking over things like that. I'd rather see the... Uh, the chemical companies and the drug companies take it over. They've got the stuff that'll cure you if you get something from their hookers. Well, right. You know, America's a capitalist society, and basically businesses will uh, form uh, around products that sell. That's why in this country you have a, you have a multi-million dollar sex industry. Uh, people want to read about it. People want to uh, see it. People want to do it. People want to uh, immerse themselves in it. We live in a sexual culture. That is uh, our nature. And in the freest country in the world, when we can make our choices about what products we want, what we want to do with our leisure time, well, it's quite clear. We want sex and plenty of it. And we are reaping the rewards of that with our many children that are being sexually abused and many children who are, uh, so many of them that are ending up on drugs and other problems because whenever you have prostitution, like in Las Vegas, when they began to crack down on the street prostitutes, they had a much lower problem with the drugs, a much lower problem with violence and property crimes. And so when you have prostitution, you have all of these other evils that come along with it, besides the evils of disease, which you and I have to end up paying for as taxpayers. Let me go to this young man here. Nancy, uh, does, do you recognize this man at all as a Philadelphia Eagle? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Nancy, something on your leg. What is that? Yeah. It's a unicorn. If you get any closer, you're not going to like it. Oh, 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 
Does it say Satan on it? Does it say Satan down there? Huh? Can you read? Does it say Satan? Can you read? I asked you a question, bitch. Does it say Satan? <laughs> Does it say Satan? And if it says Satan, do you love Satan? And if you love Satan, get your ass off this thing. You want it? You want to ask Nancy a question? Yeah, I'd like to ask her question. probably answer yours the same as she answered mine. How about it? Tell me to ignore ignorance. I, I don't understand. I can't hear you. I don't understand. You look fairly presentable except for the unicorn on your leg. I still can't hear you. You look like a presentable woman. Thank you. Except for the unicorn on your leg. But that was a mistake I made whatever, many years ago. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But how how can how can you sit tell us that you sit in a room, watch a man get dressed up in a woman's clothing? I'm not done. Watch a man get dressed up in woman's clothing, and you can tell sit here with a straight face and tell us you just sit there and watch. Because I can't that's that. God's on truth. I don't care whether you believe me or not, because I'm not here to impress you. <laughs> I'm concerned that you don't a call girl. Pardon? It's just a fancy name for a prostitute. You can call it anything you want. Or a whore. Whatever you want to call it. A whore too. You can go with a whore. They want to say whore? So we know what your ignorance is now. And I'm amazing everyone who doesn't agree that prostitution and whoring is good is ignorant. Go ahead, pal. Uh, Morton, I want to just thank you for some uh, choice of quality programming. It's about time. Uh, secondly, let's just realize that uh, prostitution is one of the oldest professions. Let us get a reputable company or some aspect of government to control it, tax it, put those taxes to a worthy cause. The country certainly needs the help. God bless America. Morton, I love your Red Sox. Thanks for that. Yes, ma'am. Now, maybe we, can get, maybe we can get a lady's point of view here. I don't want to ask, if that first trick, how did you feel? That's, I, I'd just like to know that. How big was your self-esteem? Mixed feelings. I how many times up... can you swallow your self-esteem? And how little do you feel right now? And you're... Wait, you're, you're giving me... You're suggesting that this is a way of life, a way to make your living, a way to feel good about yourself? If it's good for me, it's... You know, I'm not saying it's good for you or anybody else out there. What I've chosen to do... Okay, you do you think you there? should suggest and make this a career for other women? I'm sorry, what? Do you think that you should allow this to be a career for other women? If you're legal age and you're mind, you know, you've got all your mind together, whatever you decide to do is your business. So if you're 18 years old and you're still not a mature adult, I'm all for 18. I'm thinking of anyone 21 or older. 21 or older? Yeah. But I'd like to know is, how do you feel like as a person walking around knowing that you're a whore and a prostitute? Yeah. And I You, when he feels that you're First going out all, on dates watching at other men, a whore or a prostitute, and I don't How consider myself. How when he met you was uh, when you were a whore maybe or a prostitute? Ask him. Maybe, maybe he's got self-esteem of a, of a pig. Anyway, maybe he's got more than women. I, 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 I noticed one thing. We're going to take a break here in just a second, but I noticed one thing. When we said whore and prostitute, all the men applauded, but none of the women did. And, and you know what we're doing? We're hurting women here. That's and exactly I, I don't, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to hurt women. I don't want to hurt women. By the same token. You're hurting the women. I think they ought to put the Johns in prison if they're going to put the prostitutes in prison. We'll be right back. Break away for a commercial. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. As you can here, probably hear, my you know, friends, the argument continues here. The prostitute on stage, the young lady who's upset by prostitution, debating with her. And again, you come down to no answer really being uh, given on the situation. Janine Hansen, Triggs, uh, Janine Hansen, uh, who is uh, head of Eagle Forum in Nevada, says under no circumstances this type of situation. Mr. Cherry, of course, says, hey. 
This is the only way I can have sex. So you have to consent. You've never made a mistake, I guess. No, I made plenty of mistakes. Okay, fuck. You should be legalized. All right, and, uh, and I think I have to agree. I think I have to agree with uh, what Eric says. Uh, maybe we have to think of the exception rather than the rule. And maybe the exception is that there are friends and there are people we could prevent from having this disease. I gotta, I gotta tell you, you were excellent, all right? We missed a lot of what you said. We missed a lot of what you said. You were excellent, defended your cause very well. Eric, our other guest, Janine Hansen, and this gentleman, Fred Cherry. Uh, Fred, good luck to you, pal, all right? Don't get a disease, whatever you do. Nancy, Nancy had a lot of guts coming here. I appreciate her getting here. I think she has a lot of guts to be in the business you're in. I think you're really stupid, all right? I think you're really stupid. There has to be some balance here with a guy who can't get it and a girl who can't get it can get it legally and they don't go to jail. I don't know what the balance is yet. Maybe we'll come up with it in one of Eric's writings. Good night, everybody. Have a good night.